good evening and welcome to Town Talk. Town Talk is a new program that uh, <clears throat> Chumps of Telemedia is putting on. And the purpose of this program is to help train directors, camera people. So the first thing I would say, if you're interested in uh, becoming a uh, director of a show or a camera person, uh, give me a call or give the studio a call. And we'll gladly have you come down. And on uh, this show, we'll allow people to be trained. So if uh, at times we get, have little blackouts or the camera's not focused just correctly, you'll understand why. Uh, over the, the year, as we do this show, we will do it in different formats so that we can train people in those formats. Tonight's format, I'm using Kelly Beatty's uh, <clears throat> North of 95 format. And our subject tonight is the 4th of July celebration in Chelmsford. And my guest tonight are Walter Hedlund from the Town Celebrations Committee and Mike McCarran from the Chelmsford Elks. Good evening. Good evening, Dennis. Good evening, Dennis. How are you doing? Uh, what I wanted to talk about tonight was uh, what goes on, like the, as we speak right now, this is the 3rd of July that we're taping this, and so the, the uh, festivities on the common are going on, and uh, tomorrow will be the parade. I thought maybe we could get into the background of, of what, what it takes to put on this kind of celebration. By the time the people have seen this, uh, they'll have they'll have been to the to the celebration and they'll have seen the parade, and I wanted to get, let them understand the amount of work and stuff that goes into it. So, Walter, maybe you can give us a little background on your history with it. And well, the the thing is, right after the Fourth of July, after everybody comes back from vacation, maybe in middle of August, we try to get together for a critique on what took place at the present year, and then plan for next year. And uh, you have to make commitments uh, many times months in advance. And I think Mike can explain a little bit further when he goes into the bands. But uh, we have a meeting with uh, Bob Kelly, who's the chairman of uh, the Lions Club, to take care of the booth areas. There are many letters to be sent out, commitments and so forth. Uh, and uh, we meet right up until prior to Christmas, and then we knock off for, oh, maybe a couple of months till after the holidays. And then January, uh, we plan uh, one meeting in January, two in February, two in March, two April, till we build right up to the month of June, and then, uh, you know, it's almost a weekly situation. Uh, it, it takes a lot of preparation. It's not something uh, that can be done overnight. Well, now, because uh, to, to, to the Joe Q. Citizen and myself, I see the things I can see, of course, is the reviewing stand has to be right, put right. up in place, that the roads are blocked off. And I know that, I, and from personal observation, I know that you come out every year <laughs> and block off the end of, yeah. of uh, Westwood Street yeah, at Dalton. Dalton Road, okay? that's right, yeah. Um, but that, you have to do that. Now, you, I know you appear in front of the Board of Selectmen to get certain things voted on, like that parking. Is that is absolutely correct. Thing. There's certain streets that have to be shut down, and you being a former selectman, you understand the rules and the laws and regulations. Uh, so we try to uh, cover all the bases, so-called. Now, I know a few years ago, a uh, town meeting, actually, we, we had to, uh, we passed a bylaw dealing with vendors on, at the parade and at, around the common. Uh, so that, that we could restrict it basically to the to the people that mm -hmm. uh, participate, right? And, and I know you have a list. Of, uh, Bob Kelly was going to come here tonight, but uh, he's tied up. Well, yeah, he, he got tied he, up. Things, you know, probably the third of July is not a time to try and interview <laughs> Bob Kelly. Uh, but uh, uh, one of the things that the Alliance Club basically runs the uh, booths. That's correct. Okay? Mm -hmm. And um, in the I guess I'll, I'll, I'll go back a little bit in my history of the selectmen. Uh, at one point in time, the selectmen, and, and especially Brad Emerson, uh, felt that the uh, common was, was kind of leaning a little too much towards uh, plastic, okay, and, and, and professional people and, and vendors, so, you know. Commercialism? Commercialism. Commercialism, yes. that's correct. Okay. Yeah, that's very and true. so he, he kind of... Uh, Put a policy together. They wanted to be like a, a hometown, homespun, mm -hmm. and, the, and the booth should all be um, charitable organizations and, and nonprofits and that kind of thing. 
And uh, I think that's pretty much the way it is today. It is, Dennis. The only thing that we have found in the past two or three years, various organizations are having a tremendous problem of getting volunteers to work different things. And I think this is in every community. I don't think mm -hmm. it's just Chelmsford. Uh, and I think this is one of the problems, but it's been a philosophy of the Town Celebration Committee for a family type of celebration. In other words, you can bring your children down, they can run all over the common, they're not going to get hurt, people are going to look out for them, right. and that type of thing. And I think that one of the nicest things that we as a committee have talked about many times is after the parade is over, and if you drive around town, cars are parked all over the place in different resident neighborhoods, but you look in the backyard, they're all having cookout. Right. You know, I mean, everybody that runs into me, they say, well, if you've got a minute, drop by, have a hot dog, have a hamburger. I mean, this is what makes a family affair type of thing. Yeah, I, I would agree that uh, as you look at uh, the 4th of July celebration, it's the people come as families, the teenagers, the oh, little sure. kids. Okay. Uh, now, granted, they may go different ways on, uh, on the booths, but but it's things that you do as a family, and it's a, tra a family tradition. This is what we're hoping that we maintain. Now, we were talking a little earlier about the funding and everything for the parade. You've been doing this for about 30 years now. Right? Yeah, that's correct. And, and, uh, but back in 1980, Proposition 2 and a half was passed. And when that passed, the town could no longer afford to fund the f any of the celebrations. Mm -hmm. And so we formed the Holiday Decorating Committee, which takes care of uh, the Christmas, the Christmas, Christmas lightings mm -hmm. and all that kind of thing. And we went to two, two organizations, the town. We asked the Lions Club to, to take over the booths, and we asked the Chumps at Elks to take over the parade. Mm -hmm. And Mike, maybe you could talk about a little bit about the parade and, and uh, what kind of things that, that the Elks have to do to put the parade on. Well, as you said, Dennis, for 19 years, uh, we've been doing the uh, Fourth of July parade and happy to do it. It's, it's, not, it's not a problem. Uh, w what happens is, Walter said, we, we start meeting in August just to go over what happened the year before, and then around December and January we begin having our monthly and, and bi-weekly meetings at, at the town hall to discuss the logistics of getting the uh, common and the parade together. But uh, as fr from the Elks point of view, we start uh, mailing out to all people who participate in the parade. We build, try to build up a database over the years of who's going to uh, put a float in the parade, who's going to march in the parade, what bands are available? You know, we, you have to book them early, Dano. Right. You know, in order to mm -hmm. get these people, uh, these bands available for the Fourth of July. You know, the local police departments with their color guards, et cetera, Westford, Lowell, Chelmsford. You know, as many as we can get, as many uh, veterans groups as we can get in. Right now, do you have to, uh, like, do you have some that you, you can count on year in and year out versus? Uh, others that come and go. If you don't, if you don't contact them early, they'll book somewhere else. Oh, okay. They really will. Uh, bands are in in high demand uh, all over the place. However, I heard that's like Burlington, for instance, is not doing the parade anymore. So that you know it opens up some right. more some more people for us to uh, to grab. Who do we compete against on Fourth of July? Actually, um, it used to be Burlington used to be big in the afternoon, I believe, tomorrow, and I think Bill Recker has a parade do on the really? fourth. Yeah, I Lowell does not. No, I know. Yeah, I thought Wilmington, Wilmington might have. Wilmington, uh, Wilmington, they have a big celebration yeah, tonight. I don't believe they have a parade, yeah, to no. my knowledge. I don't think they yeah. have a uh, what, what, Marlboro, what, I think. What does it cost to put on a parade? It cost, a, it cost us about 10000 between ten and uh, maybe $13,000 to do the parade. And what, uh, like, where, where does that expense go? To pay, you have to pay bands? We or? have to pay bands. Uh, it's, it's, it's all band money, mostly. It's okay. all band money. Okay. Okay. Uh, transportation, for instance, we pay for the buses for the high school band. We pay for some of uh, the uh, awards we give out. You know, we give awards for the f best floats. Okay. And we give other, uh, say, commemorative plaques to all the people who bring a float to show that they participate in the parade. So we have the, you know, local trophy place, our and our trophy, uh, right. do that for us. But it doesn't come without cost. And now, uh, how, we, how do you raise the money to do this? Well, we have um, a raffle, a town-wide raffle beginning at about, in about May to uh, pay for the parade. So right. we've been doing the raffle for as many years, I guess, as yeah. we've been doing the parade. Right. And I don't know if you can years. zoom in on this, but yeah, there's a ticket. here's, a, here's that raffle out. ticket. And uh, everybody in town supposedly had gotten a book of these, you know, in, in May. Mm -hmm. So hopefully they can fill these out and send them in uh, and the drawings right after the parade tomorrow. Okay. Uh, you know, I'm just noticing that uh, we, we have on, on camera right now the, uh, uh, what's going on in the common. 
And if you could fade to the to the Carmen, we have the uh, suburbanettes. Is that is suburbanettes? That is correct. Right. Yeah. The twirlers are, are uh, entertaining. Now, who schedules the Carmen tonight? I do. The okay, Town that's celebration, the celebration Committee. Winning? That's correct. We set the <coughs> the program up. And and what kind of thing? Now you, I see the suburbanettes there. Now what other kinds of things do you have on the common? And uh, earlier there was a uh, a balloon exhibition, a yeah. hot air balloon yeah. exhibition, which is it was conducted behind the Trump the fire station, the central station. Uh, they and that was donated, right? That is correct. All these are donated. Every bit Remax of things on the common is strictly a donation and a volunteerism by the individuals. Community band, uh, last, uh, the first night of this year's celebration, uh, we had what a jazz band, which is part of the Chunsford Community Band. The, the program went on for an hour, and a little bit over an hour and three quarters. And then the Chunsford Community Band is the night before the fourth. And then they have the gigantic fun flag raising by the fire department of the aerial ladder during the Stars and Stripes Forever. And I had people say to me, that is the 4th of July. Now, and I think that's a wonderful... Um, you mean the flag raising? Yes, the aerial ladder will raise a tremendously big flag. I forget the size of it, tremendous. Is and that the one that used to fly up on Drum Hill? I don't know about <laughs> that, Dennis. But the, the ladder is extended 100 feet in the air. That's how large the flag is. This is tomorrow morning. Tonight, tonight, tonight during the band concert, okay. just prior to nine o'clock. Okay. Now, now on the Fourth of July morning, you also have a flag raising ceremony. Yes. Right? Do we have the flag ceremony uh, this this year, the year two thousand? Uh, we had the honor guard of the Chancellor Fire Department raise the flag on a traditionally flagpole in the center of town. Many people have asked me about this age of that flagpole. I wish I could find out. I understand it's well over 100 years old. Newly painted, by the way. Uh, that's correct, I, yes. My no guess sense. is it's 1879. <laughs> I hope you're right, Dennis. I'd like uh, to find plus out. Plus a minus a year. Like well, that's the year, that's the year the, the uh, Old Town Hall was built. Well, yeah, that could very well so be. I, you my, were there, Walter. My guess I know, is it, I must have been there. My I guess is it probably come. happened about the same time. But no, it... Uh, I don't know, if, if, if you have an opportunity, uh, you know, over the years I've been looking at that poll, and it's, it, it doesn't it's mean something much. that's really... Bernie gets chewed out for it when it, when it isn't painted all the time. Well, know? I mean, uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's a big task yeah, it is to paint. paint. Well, it's, it's a well, the, see, we'll have, to, we'll, have to get, uh, we'll have to have that research now. I, I'm very it. curious okay. about it. I've had three or four people ask me about it, I, and I, I understand. With Jane Drury on the case. Jane. Yeah, she would maybe know, oh, but it's uh, she. She can find out the answer to anything. They claim Trust it's me. 18 feet into the ground. Wow, is it really? that's gone through hurricanes, tornadoes, yeah. Oh, yeah, everything. Yeah, you know, it's a tradition, like the steeple yeah. of the Unitarian Church. Yeah. Now you know, uh, speaking of history and and the parade, two years ago I interviewed George Parkhurst on. When I, was doing, I did a little radio outside of the Unitarian Church. Mm -hmm. And George, um, when he was a little boy, uh, marched in the parade with the, with the Grand Marshal, who was the guy who started the parade back in 1895 mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. 1878 or whenever it started. Mm -hmm. And so he, had, so like he had the whole parade for, the, for its entire thing. And he, and he talked to me about some of the things that went on at, in Chelmsford when he was young. Uh, as far as Fourth of July celebrations, mm -hmm. and one of the things that pranks were a big thing, and we get we have a prank this year. We'll talk about <laughs> it, but pranks were a big thing. And, and he told me the prank that that uh, was the best one he saw while he was a young man was some some boys went into the uh, Unitarian Church and they went up into the steeple and they tied a fishing line onto the clapper on the bell mm -hmm. and they they ran it out into the cemetery, Forefather Cemetery. Then about two o'clock in the morning they started ringing the bell. Well, the police arrived, church is locked, they have to get somebody to open the church, they go up and there's nobody in the church, right? So they close it all up. And they, they can't leave. see the fishing line. Right. <laughs> so they leave and the bell starts ringing again. They did this all night to them, right? Um, and so in, and on that tone, I understand that um, there, there was a prank last night uh, on the common. Could you uh, tell I us? I believe it was the night before. Uh, uh, it's, uh, it was on a... Uh, Thursday night, 
uh, the local television group of the town of Chelmsford, they have placed a monitor on a, a light pole in the common for a security situation where it could sweep the booth areas, the common, and also the town hall. And uh, the van, which is parked in the, on the common where this operating this so-called security camera, we had some young lads, uh, we understand, that climbed up on top of this so-called van who knew that this camera was so-called scanning the common area and they mooned the camera. <laughs> I thought that was, <laughs> And that they didn't realize, from what I understand, that uh, there was a monitor at the police station. <laughs> Oops. So they didn't realize that there were two cruisers on the way down that had spotted it on the monitor. But from what I gather, uh, it was early, very early in the morning, one, two o'clock, so hopefully the Chumford public wasn't watching. <laughs> they missed a full moon over the corner. They missed a full moon over the corner, <laughs> the that's morning. correct. Now, all right. Um, well, speaking of the uh, citizen of, you know, the marshal well, yeah, of, uh, yeah, yeah. of the parade, yes. uh, you know, that's a person that, that, the, that we put out as citizen of the year, that everybody sends in nominations, and, and we as the Elks, you know, with some other outsiders, select who will be the citizen of the year, and they honor, that honor extends to being the marshal of the parade. Right. And this year it's George Dixon. Okay. He is the uh, grand marshal of the parade this year. Okay. M maybe you could give us a little bit of the background on George? Well, as I don't know a whole lot about George, but I guess George was a was a real sports guru in town. Mm -hmm. Going going way yeah, back, so. he was very instrumental in starting youth basketball, and I think more importantly, youth hockey. So much so that I think they have a George Dixon hockey jamboree at they the do. Songa Serena now, That's beginning yep. two years ago. Yep. So, so it's quite an honor to be the uh, marshal of the parade. There's no question about it. Yeah, and I yep. think it was a great honor. Cause You've I, been one. Yeah, I, I was yeah. one what four or five first, years ago uh, when we started when we yeah. brought this back. Walter was but the first. George Dixon, as some of you audience might know, no, I was the last politician. Yeah, uh, <laughs> as some <laughs> of you audience might know, I've been emergency management director in the town of Chester for twenty odd years, and George was my deputy, and we've gone through hurricanes, tornadoes together. Boy, we were on a building committee uh, of the East Chelmsford Fire Station and the West Chelmsford Fire Station. George has been very active in town, mm -hmm. and I, I was so happy uh, that you folks made mm -hmm. that selection, mm -hmm. and I, I'm real proud that he's part of it. We are too. Now, how does that how does that selection process work? We we begin like in January, and we uh, use Cable 43 in the in the local newspaper to let the townspeople know that we're we're having a citizen of the year contest and we expect uh, nominees you know letters of nomination to be sent to the lodge mm -hmm. then we have a selection committee that that goes through them and hopefully we we pick out the right person and then we do some interviews with with the uh with the eventual winner and we we have an awards night at the lodge in february where we bring them in for uh for, you know photographs and set the plaque up and his picture hangs in our lodge you know yes for, uh, right. for a year i think for a year until he's re next the yeah. next citizen mm -hmm. of the year very good and then we uh go through that process and we get it published in the local paper and hopefully everybody's happy well you know what i thought about was when um, we talked about back in the, in 1980 when proposition two and a half came in and then the board of selectmen uh could the town could no longer fund this event and and went to the uh, lions and the elks to help out uh, it really strikes me as the old adage of, if you if you need something done, ask a busy person exactly to do it. Exactly right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, like the Elks, <coughs> no organization in town does more support of town functions than the Elks. Yeah. Okay? It's good to hear. And and yeah, uh, right. but it kind of comes together. Like I know I'm involved with the uh, Student of the Month program, mm -hmm. and and youth government. We've got and, and and we have the Students of the Month marching mm -hmm. in, the in the parade. parade right. Okay, and uh, and so I end up marching with them and. Uh, I, I'll tell you, the reception is tremendous. Mm. I, you know, I've marched with the selectmen, and they, you know, they get a few catcalls, yeah. but oh, but yeah. the students of the month get a, yeah. a you know, a great hand. I, I mean, think that's great. To, a, a, a student, I think he, a person, whether it be a male or female, remember that the rest of their life. Yeah. I think. It, but the, you know. Trying to convince someone to march first in the yeah. parade is oh, difficult. Oh, yeah. Like yeah. Uh, last yeah. year when we first 
did the students of the month. Yeah. I remember yeah. how difficult it was. They said, well, I'm not going to do that. My friends aren't going to do oh, it. I, yeah. Even this but, year, I had people, go, they, I had to I'd say, well, who else was doing it? Right. Okay. Oh, sure. But they after they know. did it, they wouldn't trade their place right. for anybody. Oh, that's right. And last yeah. year, we had the, uh, was it the Chelmsford High s girls, was a girls softball team? Yes. Yeah. yes. Won the state, the state championship, yep. and they were reluctant to march. But after that, they said they never had a better time. They yep. enjoyed it. The, town yep. rec the recognition was, was oh, tremendous. Now, now uh, how many people would you say attend? How many spectators do we have at these parades? Uh, over the years, Dennis, uh, I've seen as many as eighty to 90,000 people. Now, don't forget, these are not all Chanford residents. Okay. No, you only have 33,000 residents. Right. You have right. low <laughs> and all the surrounding yeah, towns. For some strange reason, people love a parade. You know? Yep, yep. No, and, I, uh, it's, it's packed 50 they deep They always look Mary's forward head. to it. Uh, to the center, which is the center where the reunion and so forth, you have a tremendous crowd. Those are mostly, I think, Chancellor Chokal residents. But you take the other side of 495, you get a great influx of Tingborough, Lowell, you know, mm -hmm. Westford, they go up there and they can get back on the highway and go right. back. Over the years, um, the town celebration has always had a great rapport with the people of Lowell. And they always said, hey, Walter, you people always have the best celebration. You know, we're not going to. Right. But in the last couple of years, they've gone back into, I believe there's a program going on, uh, this Fourth of July along the uh, so-called river. Well, they can. One of the th advantages they have over us is uh, they can put on fireworks. That's yeah. correct. Because they yeah. have the river. That's now right. the Elks did put on fireworks yes. for some number yeah. of years. That's but right. That's right. Logistically, parking just, was. Yeah, yeah. You can't do it. Well, logistically, really, there is no great safety area in town at right. the present time to put on a firework display. Believe it or not. Yep. No, I believe it. You know, we've all mm -hmm. concentrated mm -hmm. with homes and whatnot, yeah. and uh, it's a fire hazard. Mm -hmm. There's no question about it. The world uh, shoots them over the river. That's great, you know? One, one of the other, uh, now a tradition, is the uh, John Carson Road Race. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now, that's been going on for seven or eight years? More, uh, ten, more than I ten. I can't recall the year, but I did talk with Bob Sullivan, who was the chairman of the road race. I talked with him uh, last Friday. He was up to 700 registration for running. Wow. He's been and a he expected another lately. 100 right. or more will register, you know, last minute type of thing. Yep. And uh, there's another thing families I think is great. Oh, yes. Families go out and run. Let me tell you, they reaction. don't run for the time element. They enjoy. Let me, it. let me tell you a story about the reaction of a couple of people I know who do running, and they so they, for lack of anything else to do, they came down and they entered into the Carson Road Race, right? And it starts over by, up on the um, Parkhurst Road. Exactly. So they 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 run and they have to go around the back of the house. And they just think it's like a two mile run. Then they start running down Route Four. And there's, you know, 30,000 people cheering them <laughs> on. We didn't even know what was going on. What is this? You know? <laughs> that, 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 that was unbelievable. You know, you know, I'll tell you a, a, a story. And my brother started this. Is we had, my father was a track star at Lowell High School. Mm -hmm. Very good, and, too. And um, uh, my brother started the uh, Flash Ready Trophy. Okay? And it's awarded to the, the family member, descendant of my father, and, and, their, and it, can, it can be... Uh, son-in-laws and grandson-in-laws and that kind of thing, uh, who uh, each year gets awarded to whichever one wins. Okay? So my son Kevin's won it a couple of times, my brother won it once, um, and and this year there's got to be uh, like nine or ten readies in it, you know, in the That's race. Great. To, That's know, great. Um, and, the, and of course, they're marrying. They, now that when they're dating, they have to find out how fast this guy is. <laughs> you know, oh, I like that. It's like that. my daughter. My daughter's engaged to a like to a that. pretty pretty quick guy, and so she's saying next year. You gotta uh, run. Huh? He's gonna run, and and That's my niece's great. my niece's husband is the favorite this year. That's and, uh, great. That's but great. my brother-in-law has got a shot. You know. That's uh, great. And uh, we have a picture taken every year, and the name okay. gets engraved All on right. the trophy. You okay, know? good. So. Well, see, there again, Dennis, that's what I refer back to, a family-oriented exactly. right. celebration. Yep. Right. yep. You know? There's something for everybody, really. That's yeah. right. Yeah. That's right. Now, that's the, now, you know, you've been doing this for 30-something years. How do, you, how do you spend the 4th of July after the parade? What do you do? 
Well, like, he goes around and collects hot dogs anyway. <laughs> oh, boy, I'll tell you, once that's over with, boy, it, uh, you know, once the he, equipment. He's in bed at noontime. <laughs> no, it's a strange thing. I, uh, I, I, I really drop right out as a picture, you know. Uh, Fourth of July night, I, my wife and I, if I feel up to it, she feels up to it, we might go to Lowell to watch the fireworks. Then we come home, and that's it. <laughs> And how about Mike? How about you guys? Well, uh, at the at the lodge on our in our pavilion, you know, we have um, free hot dogs, hamburgers, sodas, and uh, beer, if you will, for anybody who participates in the parade to come on down. We have some music down there, and they can spend the afternoon. Uh, the firemen usually come down because they're the first trucks down, right. and we bring the fire trucks from all any, any community that we can get. By the way, I'd like to say thanks to Jim Curran of the fire department for kind of bringing correct. all that together. He, that. he really goes out and uh, gets coordinates all the fire trucks, and they they kind of head down to the to the uh, pavilion for like an hour, have a little snack and maybe some you know some soda or whatever before they go on to the next parade. So usually we spend the the afternoon there, then we go to our uh, cookout in our neighborhood in East Chelmsford. So. You know, speaking of the fire trucks, um, there's, there's been some discussion on the yeah. internet about uh, yes, the numbers exactly of fire trucks. Yes, exactly right. And, and to me, when I sit there watching, mm -hmm. you know, a fire truck from all these different communities, it makes me feel good and yeah. proud that, yeah. that yeah, yeah, all yeah, these yeah, communities yeah. are here, but yeah. they're here supporting Chelmsford Parade. Exactly parade, right. You know? That's right. That's right. And, and so, if the farther away, the more impressed yeah. I am. You and know? the more yeah. fire trucks we can get, yeah. they're making the more noise that they can make, the yeah. better the parade and, is. And you know, having. Okay. I don't think I've ever missed a parade since I, I, I marched in the Tercentennial Centennial in 55, and I know I've made everyone since then, but, um, uh, you know, so I, I, and I'm a people observer, and the crowd, lo the kids love the firemen. Of course they do. They love oh, them. We all want to be firemen, don't we? You know? Oh, yeah. That's... And uh, speaking of that, the, the last Eagle Scout out of uh, uh, the Elks troop. Troop 75, ago, yeah. Mm -hmm. He wants to be a firefighter. Is that right? Yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah. Right. Jeff Drew. Druin. Okay. okay. Right. So, uh, but, uh, you know, yeah, I mean, I think that oh, it's sure. like, uh, you know, and I, and I think that um, uh, I see more people getting interested in putting in uh, old cars. Old tr yeah, a lot oh. of antiques. Okay. People love their antique cars. Oh, yeah. They, you know, it's, right. a, it's a day to display their, right. their work. You know, and it's, you know. Like, it's like for, for young kids, they, they, never, they don't get to see these cars right. at all. Right, and for people like me, it's a, it's they reminisce, you know. Right, you know yeah. Oh, I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. We have all the Corvettes coming those. in. Yeah. Tomorrow we have in the uh, like a lot of midget racers, midget racing cars from Londonderry coming down. So oh, there's right. like 15 of them oh, going to be in the great. parade, and they're also going to give out free passes yeah, for anybody who wants to go to that speedway. Yeah, that's great. Now, do we have? Do you have anything coming from the military this year? No, no. Okay. We had a uh, possible National Guard. I was talking to the National Guard recruiter over in Lowell and. Uh, be because the because they just came off their two weeks of the summer, right. they just didn't want to participate mm -hmm. in the parade. But and next year, he promised and us. And with Devon's closed, of course. That Correct, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. We used to have them down all the time. Well, a uh, half hour is gone by. Is it really? Yep. And um, I, I want to I thank Wal uh, Walter from the uh, Celebrations Committee thank you, and John. Mike from the Chelmsford Elks you. for sharing with us uh, and, and the citizens of the town the things that they go through to put on the celebration. And uh, you won't get to see this before the parade, but next year make sure you buy a oh, raffle right. ticket yeah, there you <laughs> so that you can support the parade. This is Dennis Reddy saying thank you.